Good evening, everyone. Just giving another minute here. All right, good evening, everyone. We'll get started. Thank you for coming this evening. Um, this is our first public parking forum meeting. And I'm gonna turn it right over to Andy Hill with Desmond, who is our consultant on the parking study. Good evening, good evening. Thanks for uh, making it out this evening. I know everybody is very busy, so we appreciate you taking the time. Um, I will try and be um, Jill, are you getting my feed? Can everyone hear us okay? There we go. There we go. We can hear you. Okay. okay. Thank you. So um, we had set this up initially as an opportunity to really um, engage with the general public and start soliciting um, insight from them. Uh, we like to say that we are experts in parking and transportation, but we're certainly by no means experts in Nashua. And so it's very critical for us to get an understanding for what your concerns are, what you perceive to be the challenges, uh, what your goals or objectives might be, what you want to get out of your parking system, uh, so that as we're moving forward with the work that we're doing, uh, we've got that front and center and can be most effective and most responsive. Uh, this so. The majority of this evening, as you can see, is going to be really um, there for public comment. We'll do a brief introduction of the team, uh, update you on uh, what we've done so far and what we will be doing over the next six months. Uh, we've put in a little bit of time for uh, Q&A specific to the presentation, and then from there, we'll go right into public comment. My name is Andy Hill. I am a senior associate out of uh, Desmond Design Management's Boston office. Uh, we are a consulting firm that uh, has, since 1973, has specialized in the design, uh, development, planning, and management of parking, transportation, mobility systems. There are about 100 of us all together spread across nine offices here in the US. Uh, we've delivered a little bit over 5,000 solutions to our clients since 1973. Uh, in terms of comparable engagements to what's been laid out for us here in Nashua, uh, we did similar work in Burlington, in Montpelier, Vermont, Concord, New Hampshire, uh, Hanover, Portsmouth, Lewiston, Maine, and, and Provincetown. And uh, I've, I've worked on all those projects. Um, if you want to see our, our, our work uh, in a recent project that's not a downtown study, if you've been to Tuscan Village uh, over in Salem, New Hampshire, where the old Rockingham Horse Park used to sit, we were the principal parking planner for that project and are very pleased to see how that's gone uh, forward. A lot of you, uh, I see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of you know that I was part of a policy study that was done earlier this year on overnight parking uh, that's been handed now down to the Board of Aldermen and is starting to go through uh, review and uh, debate on how that's going to be adopted and implemented moving forward. Uh, we are uh, teaming with SLR, who is a uh, very talented multidisciplinary uh, international design service firm. Um, 100 plus offices, 13 different county, countries, 1,800 different employees. They are a leaner, leader in sustainable solutions uh, and have done uh, this type of work in several cities in uh, Maine, Massachusetts, and Connecticut. Uh, I am joined by Neil Olinsky, who's sitting in front of me. Uh, he's the lead transportation planner for SLR. And we feel like they really complement our knowledge in parking systems uh, with their knowledge and their expertise in transportation systems and complete streets, strategic planning, and public communications. 
We were very adamant that we should be teamed up with a steering committee made up of um, representatives from the city uh, and from other agencies to make sure that as we took each step forward in this process, we had clear guidance on what the critical concerns were for the city of Nashua. And uh, we've been working very closely uh, with Jill Stansfield and uh, Samantha Allen and Matt Dowling, their staff who are here tonight with us. Uh, at the direction of Tim Cummings, who's the Director of Economic Development, and we've had a lot of great feedback through the first couple of meetings from a number of different people, including um, Michael Bryan, who's an alderman at large, uh, Linda McGee and Julie Chismas, who are both with the city's planning office, uh, Jay Minkara and Matt Wakens, uh, who are both with the Nashua Regional Planning Commission, and then on the private side, Rich Lannon and Mary Lou uh, Blizzardell have given their um, time to us and their insight as well. So this is the task uh, that's been set forward with us here. Uh, we're looking at a 108 uh, block study area here. That little red box that you see in the middle, that's us right now here in City Hall. So. This is a study area that runs from uh, French Hill and uh, north of the river down through the mill yard, uh, through the sit tree streets, downtown proper, all the way down to uh, Southern New Hampshire Medical Center and the Elm Street School. Um, and this study area and its boundaries were um, determined in collaboration with the city to address uh, as many uh, issues and challenges within the downtown as, uh, as possible. Our, uh, our, our schedule is an ambitious one. It's a six month development schedule. It's really made up of um, five principal tasks. We are in one of those tasks right now where you see the red box with the yellow uh, edging around it. This is the first public forum and that's part of our public engagement process. I'll be talking a little bit more about what's involved in that and what we've done so far. Uh, we're about two thirds through our existing conditions assessment, which involved a lot of data collection here and getting an understanding for what the baseline conditions are here in Nashua right now. We'll be moving out of that shortly and spending quite a bit of time going through and taking a look at how parking is managed, operated, provided, uh, what the critical policies are. Uh, here in the city of Nashua and benchmarking that against comparable communities as well as best practices and providing some feedback there on how to um, provide better uh, service moving forward as well as adopting uh, some policies that may be necessary to support the system uh, moving forward. Uh, in addition, we're also going to be doing a future needs assessment. There's a lot going on here in the city. Uh, I think everybody saw the Arts Center uh, that's in development right now. Um, I know that there was a vision plan that was recently completed for Main Street. Uh, it's not, um, it's a aspirational plan at this point, but it could potentially have some parking impacts. There are a couple of other developments that are in the pipeline right now. And the city has just been consistently growing and evolving here over the last decade or so. So we want to be able to quantify what those impacts are going to be and then be able to advise the city on how to best uh, support those proactively in order to keep that momentum and, uh, and that good growth going. When we're done with all of this, we will take um, what we have heard, what we have learned, um, and what we have uh, identified as critical path issues and put together a series of options, uh, which we will come back to the public to vet as well as a number of our different uh, stakeholder groups that we're working with. We'll get feedback from folks about what is, is not, uh, what is and is not gonna work in Nashua as well as what might be able to work but may require some adjustment in order to make it reasonably sustainable in Nashua. And when I talk about sustainability, I want to make it clear, we are talking about environmental sustainability, but we're also talking about fiscal sustainability. It's no good to be green if you don't have the green to pay for it. And we're also talking about political sustainability. It's no good to come up with a plan 
that checks all of the marks in a planning professor's handbook if it's a plan that the people are not going to be able to embrace and get behind. So uh, the reason that we do this vetting process once we have these options together is to figure out what's really going to work and what's sustainable for this particular community. Uh, we'll put that into a draft report. We'll bring that in front of the Board of Aldermen in an open public meeting. Uh, we'll get some additional feedback there, and once we have uh, that feedback, we can then start moving toward a final document, which will include an implementation plan. We are right now on schedule and hoping to deliver this final document um, shortly after Valentine's Day next year. So to date, uh, we just completed a review of current parking requirements per zoning. Uh, we benchmarked uh, the parking requirements that are on the existing zoning bylaws right now against a number of comparable communities. I'll talk about what those comparable communities are in a moment and why they were selected, as well as best practices. Uh, we are wrapping up a very comprehensive parking supply inventory. That 108 block area, I counted every space within that over the last couple of weeks here. There's a lot of shoe leather. Um, and uh, I, I put comprehensive in quotations around this because it does include all public and private parking within that 100 block area with the exception of smaller scale residential parking. We did not count uh, the garages and the driveways associated with private residents. Uh, we don't do that because essentially uh, that's, that's sacred property that uh, we cannot opine on or come up with any type of recommendation regarding. So that's not included in. Uh, we've also recently completed a series of baseline parking occupancy counts across that entire area. We were out last Friday uh, midday and Friday evening, Saturday midday and Saturday evening to execute those counts. Um, so we have a baseline right now. We're not done with that by any means. Uh, in a minute, I'll be telling you about some additional counts we'll be doing to uh, take a look at special conditions that are existing in the study area right now. But we do have that base understanding. We are uh, tabulating that information. And we will have that out for public review in short order. Uh, we also started meeting with some different stakeholders here. We've already met with the Public Library Board and the Milliard uh, Association. And then just last night, we met with the uh, committees for infrastructure and planning, economic and planning and economic development uh, associated with the Board of Aldermen as well. Uh, we have a lot more of these stakeholder meetings come up, but we have already started to get some great insight and feedback from folks moving forward about what their critical concerns are. And we've started to review some of the prior studies and existing documentation that uh, is in place right now. Talked about these comparable communities. What we tried to do was look at communities that had a similar density, uh, comparable population, and communities that were highly regarded as imminently livable as Nashua is. Some of these are significantly larger communities, um, so they may be somewhat aspirational. Some are slightly smaller. But in uh, speaking with the folks from the steering committee, we got general approval that um, the majority of these communities made for reasonable comparables moving forward. So this gives us a basis to sort of benchmark not only your zoning ordinance, but things like parking fees, fines, operations, um, staffing, all of these things that you want to get a understanding for what other people are doing, how effective they're doing it at, um, so that we can figure out where we have areas for improvement moving forward. Um, so in the immediate term, we still got a little bit of work to do on this initial existing conditions um, assessment. Uh, we need to go out and do some additional occupancy counts uh, to accommodate a couple of different conditions. One condition was Saturday afternoon when we were out doing our counts, we were aware that the Duck Derby was going on along the riverfront. Uh, we'll be doing a, a small scale set of counts in and around that area when you don't have a special event just so that we have an understanding 
uh, for what that looks like during both uh, special event and non-special event conditions. Uh, and then uh, around the end of November, early December, we'll be going out and doing a series of supplemental counts on weekdays and weekends up and down the main street and the cross streets to understand uh, how things will look different once the barriers that are out there right now come down to allow for snow removal, but hopefully before the snow flies so that we get a very clear picture for what main street looks like when those barriers aren't there. Uh, you may see us out and about over the next few weeks as well um, doing license plate inventories. This is a tool that gets executed to understand what typical length of stay and turnover is in a series of parking spaces. Sometimes it's along a block face or a series of block faces. Sometimes it's in a particular facility or series of facilities. And basically this information helps us take a look and test existing policies. Uh, are the time limits that are imposed in a particular area appropriate for what the actual use is right now? Uh, are we managing to capture scoff laws who might be extending beyond the posted time limits? Uh, is the parking across the downtown turning over often enough that a first timer who comes into downtown could with reasonable effort be able to find an open space pretty quickly or does that condition need to be addressed as well? Uh, we will have ongoing stakeholder meetings as well. And um, we are anticipating uh, delivering a draft of the assessment of existing conditions early next month and finalizing that work certainly before the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, that does not mean that our work is done by any means. Uh, as I said, we will be starting the policy and operations assessment shortly. Uh, we'll be going to the future needs assessment here between Thanksgiving and Christmas taking those Christmas holidays to start developing uh, those options. We will actually come back in a public forum like this in early January to present all of those options to folks and say, this is what we heard, this is what we understand, this is what we project are potential issues, and here is a whole host of different things you can do about this. And what we'll be looking to get from you folks at that point is some feedback about what do you think is gonna work, what do you like, what do you don't like, so that we can help uh, refine that long list down to an implementable plan here. Um, like I said, once we get that feedback, uh, we'll be putting that together into a draft plan that we'll take to the Board of Aldermen. We'll get additional feedback from the board as well as the general public after that meeting. We'll take that back and we'll revise that final pl um, plan and put that together with an implementation program that gives the city a very clear roadmap on how to do parking over the next 10 years or so. But that's a long picture. This evening, we really want to hear from you folks. Um, we're very interested in identifying particular areas and issues that you believe are in need of focus, uh, understanding what the priorities are for the members of the general public that we haven't had a chance to talk to yet. Um, we want to start building an appreciation for what makes Nashua unique, unique and how we need to move forward in order to preserve that uniqueness. Uh, and we also want to make folks aware that certainly the conversation is not done by any means. SLR has put together a great website uh, that is going to include materials uh, as we're producing them, uh, draft documents and analysis and graphics. Throughout the course of the study, they'll be available for review uh, from this website. Um, we will be starting a fairly extensive surveying um, effort here uh, through that website as well over the next two or three weeks where folks who couldn't make it out to one of these meetings who haven't been at a stakeholder meeting but want to be heard will have the ability to go in and participate in a couple of different tools. One's a standard online survey. Uh, the other one is a tool which actually will allow you to put a pin and comments onto a electronic map of the entire study area to say, hey, guys, you need to look at this area. Hey, guys, this area is a problem. Make sure that you focus on this particular uh, area that's here. Um, because we are early in the process now, we are not in a position tonight to present policy recommendations. Again, we're still in the data collection 
process, so we're not really um, there yet. We're, we're not really in a position to address any burning issues that may be in front of the Board of Aldermen. We're still in the process of learning about that as well, and so we don't necessarily have an opinion on that. Um, I know that the overnight parking study is making its way through the Board of Aldermen, and they're evaluating that to figure out um, which of those recommendations they want to adopt, which ones they want to adopt with revision, which, which are not going to get adopted. So I'm not really in a position this evening to speak to that. Um, and there are folks who do show up from time to time who want to tell us about the um, four spaces in front of their house. We certainly want to understand if there's an issue there, and we will do our best to uh, include that within our course of study one way or another. But I can't commit this evening to coming out and studying one particular street or one particular lot um, beyond what we're already doing right now. So with that said, um, thanks so much for your time. Uh, we're really looking forward to getting your input. The way this is going to work this evening here is if you have a comment that you would like to make, uh, either come up to the mic uh, or raise your hand if you're out there in Zoom world. Uh, my associate Neil Olinsky will be the official timekeeper per uh, the standard rules for public engagement here in the city of Nashua. We'll give every commenter three minutes. Uh, Neil will let you know when you're getting to the end of your time. And um, because we have uh, a limited attendance uh, this evening, at least in person and somewhat online, I'm sure if you don't get it all in the first three, we can probably uh, go through again. We've got 100 minutes on this. Before I open the floor up for that, does anybody have any questions to what I've just presented just now? Yes, sir, if you want to. And that's kind of the answer to your question. That's how we're going to. Andy was mentioning. Can you just state your name? Yeah, so my name is Gary Wingate. And Andy was mentioning that he's going through the process of how we're going to proceed. I'm sorry, your address for the record, please. Um, my personal home address? <coughs> okay, 15 Sherman Street in Nashville, New Hampshire. Oh, okay. You're so Andy was mentioning he wants to go through the process, and we have some people here live that were invited to come and were here, made the effort to do that, and uh, instead of seeing the Red Sox. And um, also, there's a lot of people that said they couldn't make it tonight that will go on Zoom. So I just was wondering how you're going to operate or execute the Zoom into this meeting. Do they get to go first? Are you going to have a compilation of a little bit of this and that? Just want to know how you're going to proceed. Um, we'll probably let folks who are here if they want to comment first, we'll give them the opportunity to go first. Um, Sam is actually monitoring the Zoom feed, and as folks send in questions or raise hands, she'll be relaying that out in this room um, for recording as well here. So uh, that's how we're going to get things out uh, from Zoom World so that you can hear them here and how we're going to make sure that you're heard out in Zoom World as well. All right, with that, I'm going to sit down and open up my ears and hear what you folks have to say. Thank you so much. Feel free to come up to the microphone if you would like. All right, looks like uh, Derek Anderson has his hand raised. Derek, if you can just state your name and address for the record. You just have to unmute yourself. Weird, I just did that. There we go. Um, this is Derek Anderson, and I'm representing Wingate Pharmacy at 129 Main Street. So just wanted to kind of briefly go over how vital and important it is to discuss process going forward. Uh, Mr. Hill gave an excellent timeline for the six-month research of this project, um, and I don't think any... any uh, decisions or implementation should occur before that has ended. Uh, Main Street retailers and other non-restaurant businesses either purchase their buildings or lease their spaces with an understanding that they would have parking in front of their storefronts. 
these businesses have built their current customer base in line with this model. Restaurants who have either purchased their buildings or leased their spaces did so understanding the availability of outdoor dining space. They too have built their loyal following based on this model. Whenever you see a town or city make major changes to infrastructure, it is typically done through a master plan or long-term planning process, such as what Mr. Hill went over. Take the National School District, for example. They hired a firm to conduct a district-wide facility study. They had experts weigh in on the various aspects of the study. The data as well as recommendations were presented to the Board of Education. Public hearings were held to allow feedback after all avenues of study and communication were conducted in an organized fashion then the board made a decision on the future of its infrastructure. This usual and customary process was proposed to create a new overnight status quo, which we are now trying to validate after it has already been implemented. I remember the famous words in the lead up to the Affordable Care Act, we will read the bill after it is passed. This seems to be the process the city has taken to legitimize Jersey barriers on Main Street. The barriers should be removed and not set back up until after this parking study has been completed, along with a long-term study on redesigning downtown Main Street. We have, re we have witnessed the extended dining program to be utilized mostly on Friday and Saturday nights in only a few months of the warm season. We have met with our budding restaurant and have offered to make space available on the sidewalk in front of our business, which would be closed at night, uh, so that they could utilize extra space on the sidewalk for their patrons. This model can be replicated throughout Main Street, businesses working with businesses, restaurants with non-restaurants, to create a situation where there's still plenty of parking and the restaurants have additional space for their patrons. Um, Mr. Hill just briefly mentioned um, one of their tests would be for a newcomer to Nashua, is there reasonably an, an option to find an open space? Right now with the barriers, there is not. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. My name is Jim Rafferty, um, and my address is 52 Main Street, apartment 404, that's Jackson Falls, in Nashua. My business address is in Nashua, the River Casino and Sports Bar, 53 High Street, and the Lucky Moose Casino and Tavern, 16 Gustable Avenue, Nashua, New Hampshire. I'd like to thank everybody here for giving me the opportunity to speak. Uh, I come before you as an active participant in the discussion about parking in the, city, in the city of Nashua. When my business was in jeopardy by the closure of the um, sale initially and potential closure of the School Street parking lot, uh, we felt that we had to object. Uh, after mu much discussion, the city leaders crafted a compromise that we could live with, and uh, that's a long story and I'll spare you, and I only have three minutes, but you know, we came to a conclusion. I thought people acted reasonably and uh, and I could see that my business could survive at the end of that, the build out of what is gonna be a seven story apartment complex uh, where the South Street uh, garage uh, parking lot was. Um, but we learned a big lesson there that we had to act, we had to participate, um, and we had to um, see ourselves uh, uh, part of the discussion in terms of what, what's going on and, and, and follow through on that. So, uh, because time is short, uh, I worked with a group of our employees and we went through uh, an exercise uh, so that I could have a five, five recommendations for the parking planners. This is the beginning of this process. So why not uh, you know, brainstorm a little bit? And I have five for you tonight. Um, and again, this is, comes through listening to our employees, listening to our customers. So first, um, cars have got to be part of the plan. Um, that might sound simple, simple but 
you know, I hear lots of people saying that, you know, they're thinking about Nashua 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, and, and every, all the transportation systems are going to be different. Unfortunately, I'll be dead at that time and not be able to participate in that. Um, you know, we're, we're thinking about what happens to our business in the next five years. Um, and cars will be part of the plan in the next five years. And older um, citizens with limited access and, and you know, want to park close to where they're going to go eat or, in my case, play roulette. Um, number two, the high street garage must be saved, renovated, painted, made well lit, uh, made safe. Now, as, as far as urban garages go, the high street garage is a pretty decent urban garage. I mean, people sweep it, the, the police patrol it when we had problems of people selling drugs on the top floor and using it as a, uh, a lookout so they could see the police coming. The police, you know, mounted an, uh, uh, an attack or whatever you would call it, a, a program, and, and, uh, and that was taken care of. But that garage, my customers have summarily rejected the high street garage. They will not go there. And it's because it's dirty and it's dark and it could be a lot safer. Number three, our older members of the national community sh must be considered. Uh, number four, everyone should wear a mask inside and a helmet outside. Uh, you know, the charitable gaming community lost a member of our, our, our group, if you will, when he went on a scooter and wasn't wearing a helmet and died from, at the age of 33, I think, from this tragedy. Um, we see more and more people on the road in alternative uh, transportation modes, not acting safely, and that really troubles us. Um, and to the extent that this plan should embrace safety, cannot be under cannot be understated. My last one is uh, easy, convenient parking must be part of the plan. So, so not only consider cars but consider what we're gonna do with these cars. Uh, I know we'd like to believe, have people park way far away and walk in, leave your cars. I mean, I, I think that's a nice wish list, but is that reality? So in closing, um, the River um, Casino and Sports Bar and the Lucky Moose have raised over four and a half million dollars from players to contribute to local charities. That's one of the things we do. Uh, as part of our business. Um, we are proud uh, citizens of the Nashua business community and believe in well-regulated charitable gaming has become a very important part of our uh, business community. So we hope our voice is heard when we talk about uh, our needs from parking. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to remind everyone we're going to try to keep to the three minutes because we may have a lot oh, of folks. It was about five. <laughs> about five. <laughs> you, you were, I didn't want to interrupt your flow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, would anybody else like to come up? Adrian, I see you. We'll we'll call on you next. Hi, <clears throat> I've lived in Nashua all my life. Adrian, I'm 82 Adrian, years old. Can you hear me? Adrian, yeah. I, we have one more person here that's coming up to the podium right now, but we will call on you next. Good evening. Uh, my name is Phil Bouchard. Uh, we occupy. Uh, 111 to 117 Main Street in downtown Nashua. My business is Quarryvo Insurance, but we also have a realty company called Montcalm Associates. Um, I come here as a lot of downtown residents might do with concern 
mostly in, in part due to the barriers on Main Street. Uh, we, I realize, and, and the tenants in our building realize, that this was an important part of society as we came out of COVID and things like that, to offer this opportunity to restaurants and things of the nature so that their business can proceed. Uh, if you recall back when Donnelly Lozo was a one-time mayor, her primary concern in, in this town was to expand sidewalk dining. And I'll say it again, sidewalk dining, okay? It has, and it will, I hope, in years, still be a prominent part of the city, okay? Prominent in the, in the fact that it has succeeded in the past. I understand what we have done this year with accommodating those in, in the restaurant industry with bringing out uh, the barriers and things like that. But I understand it as well as a lot of other local merchants here is that that should be a temporary situation and very temporary in the sense that next year we hope that Main Street will be continuing north and south without any, in, any interruption, especially with traffic as traffic goes in and out of Nashua right now in a very troublesome, troublesome way. Um, those that are, live downtown and are merchants in downtown realize that we have significant issues here, significant issues with regards to backlogs and traffic, with regards to other merchants who are gonna talk tonight about access to their buildings, okay? We gotta understand as citizens of this town that our situation with downtown, it's not, pardon the expression, I love our restaurants. It's not all about the restaurants, people, okay? All right, we have 12, 15 restaurants downtown, but we have 20, 200 or 150 other businesses in this town. We have banks, we have CPAs, we have financial institutions, we have insurance industries, retailers, jewelers, whatever, whatever you wanna talk about. Okay? And their needs also need to be addressed with, with, the, with the restriction of how the barriers are laid out on Main Street. Right? Hold 30 seconds. I support uh, a function whereby we eliminate in the future, future barriers for downtown uh, in the area. And but I do also support, and I think many will here too, is the continuance of a great avenue of having uh, downtown sidewalk uh, dining. It's become a, a beautiful advent to uh, our area. It brings incitement into town. And there's also merchants that want to work with merchants downtown too. They want to work with them in the sense of saying, okay, I don't have a lot of tables here, okay? Let's, 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 build, let's build out in the more areas. So what I'm trying to say in a, in a nutshell is that let's have cooperation amongst downtown people, okay? And that'll build into a better community, right? Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay. Go ahead, Adrian. Hi, my name is Adrian Lebeck. I live at Four Sugar Hill Drive in Nashua. I've been a member. I've been in Nashua my whole life. I'm 82 years old. I never felt threatened going into downtown Nashua to do any type of business. I have to go at least once a week, post office to the bank, and maybe a retailer. But I dread going down now. Those barriers are really dangerous. If there was a fire, I don't see where they're going to possibly get the emergency vehicles in. If you leave the post office and take a left on Pearl Street, and you're the last car there, it's going to take three lights before you're going to get to the main, to main Street. You may as well just sit there and play solitaire because you've got no place to go. I just feel that I hope that those barricades are not part of the future planning. That's all I have to say. Thank you.
Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak? Come on up, please. My name is uh, Casey Darrell. I don't live in Nashua, but I live in Merrimack, New Hampshire. But I have the business downtown Darrell's Music Hall at 75 Main. I have a big problem with the barriers, too. I thought this is what the meeting was about to be at, honest with you. The thing with the barriers, there have been so many close accidents out there. There have been a few accidents. It's, I'm on the corner of water in Maine, so there's just, I see so many different things happening there. A lot of road rage, people banging each other. It's just, it's, it's crazy. So I hope the barriers will be gone next year. I understand what the restaurants needed. I don't think they really utilized that much. Driving down here today, I saw two people sitting on tables out on the street. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Hello, my name's Rose Pateras. Um, I live on Dublin Ave, but I work downtown on West Pearl Street. Oh, <clears throat> I work downtown on West Pearl Street. I've worked downtown off and on for 52 years. I've seen a lot of changes, a lot of changes in the parking, and some of it's fine. However, um, not a restaurant. I am work in a small business. There are many salons and barber shops. It's my, what I work in. So we have individual clients and things like that. And a lot of the people park in the parking lot on High Street uh, near the clubs and that whatnot. And they walk through the alley and you know all that area. And then we have the High Street, no, not the High Street, the other Elm Street parking garage. A lot of people um, are now elderly and getting in and out is not always easy. You know, parking maybe, trying to find parking in the front can be hard. Not everybody's good at parallel parking. To lose the parking lot in back is very, very difficult. There are a lot of people who come downtown, not necessarily for the restaurants, but for us small business people. And, um, you know, we're on the verge of losing those clients, and I think that's very unfortunate. I don't know where else they're going to park. I truly don't. There are no really big parking lots around. I mean, I would love to hear what you could possibly offer, but it's very difficult. I would hate to have to stop working because my clients can't park anywhere. Not everybody is comfortable using a parking garage. I have been approached many times in the parking garage. I avoid it now. Um, like I say, I, I hope you can come to solutions for everybody as much as you can. I, I appreciate your presentation and I look forward to hearing you know, more things about it. But please don't consider, please consider us little guys too. We matter just as much. I mean, we've been here all our lives and care about our community and you know, I'm great. I know there'll be younger people coming but it's not all about them. We're here too. So please consider not taking everything away. I, I just don't. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Anyone else like to come up? Please come. My name is Kathy Carden, and I'm with Carden Jewelers. A few of us know each other, and I represent 125 Main Street. We own that building. Um, and we've been a long time business in Nashua, 101 years. Um, so we've seen a lot of changes from buildings taken down to buildings put up to changes in sidewalks to mayor upon mayor to back to, you know, the heart of downtown Nashua. I can go on. I was involved with the uh, starting the holiday stroll with. Um, Mr. Minoyan and a few other people. Um, so we have been a part of the downtown and we are not real happy with the barriers. We have many senior customers having been around for so long and working in a, build, a business that 
how shall I say, has a lot of sentimentality to it. As people get older, they want to leave personal items to their family members or, you know, grandchildren, et cetera. So we, in particular, have a lot of senior customers. Every single day that we are open, we have people come in and state that they're so disappointed with the city and not, I don't mean you guys, but just the fact that it's nice to have the barriers for the restaurants, but these people are hiking with canes and so forth from, you know, two blocks away and so forth, because we have three spaces in front of us. <laughs> um, so I think that, again, like a lot of people are saying, that we can work as a team. I can let people come and put tables in front of my business in the evening from 4.30 on and expand, you know, the garden or um, the San Francisco kitchen. Quite honestly, I'm there, you know, several days a week. There's very little action on the street. There's tables that are not being used. Sometimes somebody will say, oh, I want my privacy, so I'll go over here so I can talk so nobody hears me. But I mean, those tables are not being utilized, and then you have seniors that are coming in, you know, they're all out of breath, we gotta sit them down, we've gotta, I've so much as gone and got people's cars and brought them up and double parked to get them back into their cars. That's how much I feel that it's a dis, you know, an injustice to our seniors. 30 seconds. Okay, I'm sorry. The other thing is, um, if you've seen the emergency vehicles trying to get through, it's not a pretty sight. Um, it's just a matter of time until something happens with the flower barriers that are in the middle, the islands, as you know, um, and then the vehicles coming down one lane or the other and, um, and any kind of rush hour traffic. So um, I'm all in favor as working as a team, working together. I think I love all my restaurateurs, and, um, but I think we need to pull it back in, put it on the sidewalk, give some more parking, let the emergency vehicles go by without being a hazard to somebody's life and limb. So um, let's work as a team, let's work together. I think we can do it, it's, it shouldn't be a problem. You know, thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else like to come up? Please come, yep. So it's me again, Gary Wingate, Wingate's Pharmacy, uh, 129 Main Street. Represent a business that's been there for five generations, 121 years old. Kathy didn't mention it, but her business had been there for 101 years. Uh, Dickie Avard wanted to come here tonight. He's been around for maybe 70 years. The barbershops have five generations. They've been here since the 1920s. We have a lot of equity, a lot of heritage. Um, I think the way that I want to start off, I want, I want to give you a solution, but I want to kind of reiterate the problem. Uh, the barriers have been something that had sort of, when COVID came and you had mask mandates and you had a lot of emergency, we wanted to help the restaurants out to put tables out. But with the barriers that came out on March 17th on St. Patrick's Day, um, they've created a chaotic downtown environment. They've made it tough for people trying to park. We've been crowded out. Um, I can't think of anything more frustrating to see the customers we've built up through the years walking in like, where do we park? You know, doctors send new customers to our store to get things. They go, where do you park? I wish that you guys could feel at City Hall the frustration that we go through every day. So, you know, they basically put up the barriers. They basically put up um, the, 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 the seating. But what I find in my, and everybody finds, I mean, during the day on weekdays, there's nobody at the tables that are outside. They're blocking getting to our businesses, but they're not being accommodated by, the, by, by patrons using it. And I would say pretty much most weekday nights, there are not anybody there. I've gone to, I've gone to uh, Bill over at Focus over at Martha's. I've talked to Lena at San Francisco Kitchen. We've talked to The Flight. We've talked to O'Brien's. 
and they all say that they don't need all that seating. They don't use that. What they do say, to be honest with you, is that maybe on Fridays and Saturdays we might use that, but sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's too cold, sometimes it's too rainy. So basically, maybe they use it Monday, uh, Fridays and Saturdays. So my solution is that you know the Cardins and the Wingates have worked together with Lena at the San Francisco Kitchen, and we have said to them, let's just assume a world where the barricades are gone, you've got parking the way it used to be, you've got four lanes of traffic, and you have the restaurants that have the Donna Lee Lozo, like they said, they widen the streets, what they did before pre-COVID, you, you had all the restaurant space inside, you had the, the dining outside right up to you know, your building, and you had pedestrian crossing. What we're, recommend, what we're recommending is that um, if it's a Friday or Saturday night and it looks great and you have enough staff, that's another big problem, they say they don't have enough staff, if everything looks good, you've got good weather, you've got a good staff, we have given them permission. As we leave our stores at 5 or 6 o'clock at night, they bring in their business around 6 or 7 at night, you can go in front of Wingates, you can go in front of Cardins, and they can use the space in front of us and extend the dining. People can come in and park. They can go four lanes of traffic, and then when they finish, 10, 11 at night, they come and take the tables and chairs back, and they clean out the area. So it's situ situational, but it's also ut a utilitarian approach to make the greatest good for the greatest numbers. Final right. comments. Thank you. I, can I just mention one? And I, I talked to the owners of the Camaraderie Boutiques who wanted to be here tonight, the two wonderful ladies that are Cami Harris and Daniel Dyan, and they are next to Martha's, and they agreed with the concept that we want to do with San Francisco Kitchen. They would like to offer the same thing to Martha's. So, okay. thank you, thank you, Gary. We can <coughs> have somebody else that wants to speak that has not yet. Uh, Daniel Richardson. Hi. Good evening. Uh, I wanted to mention uh, that I am um, kind of reflecting what Ms. Cardin said. Uh, she mentioned it in passing, but I think it's very, very important. Um, with regard to emergency vehicles, uh, Ward 3, that's the area above the river, north of the river, up on Concord Street and uh, Manchester Street, uh, we, we have a real problem getting to the hospital down at uh, Memorial Hospital. Uh, you know, there's been times when I've needed to get down there. I can't even make an appointment sometimes. I, I'll be late. Uh, if I had like a broken arm or something and I needed to be mended, uh, go down for a cast or something, I, it just, it just, it's a real safety hazard for all those barriers to be out there. And even if the barriers aren't there, if the um, parking situation isn't corrected down there without the barriers, uh, that is also a bottleneck uh, given that we have those uh, crosswalk barriers, uh, crosswork islands, uh, kind of occluding the way. So we need, the north of the river needs to have a way to get down across the bridge, through Main Street, and get to the hospital. Uh, it's, I consider it an overriding concern. And uh, so whatever solution we come up with, we really need to consider uh, emergency vehicles being able to get through wherever the parking areas are. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Anyone else in Zoom land that would like to speak? Feel free to raise your hand or use the Zoom raise hand feature. Okay, Maria Roberts. It's on. Yep, it's on. You it on now? Yeah. Sorry. Hi, my name is Maria Roberts. I live at 47 King Street in Nashua. It's very dark in here. Um, I just wanted to uh, reiterate what Kathy Carden said so eloquently. We have to think about the senior citizens. Um, I work at the pharmacy and I was brought to tears by one of my patients coming up that incline um, parking lot with carrying her oxygen tank behind her. And it was just heartbreaking. And at the very, very least, we should have um, 
the handicap spot back in front. Um, I, I just think that we need to think about everybody. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Terrible. Not seeing anyone on Zoom. Anyone else here in the room that would like to come up? Please. Hi there. My name is Rob Parsons, 11 Gilboa Lane in Nashua. Uh, I have several properties in the downtown. Uh, one of which is 191 Main Street, which is the former TD Bank building with uh, the parking to the rear, which many people think is Martha's, but it's actually uh, belongs to the bank building. Um, when I bought it the year prior to COVID, uh, with the intent to renovate it, much like I did the uh, with the courthouse becoming Penichuk, uh when I purchased that property, not knowing what it's going to be, but uh, we did have the lot, and we, I was trying to secure it because it had been basically public domain for a number of years that the bank was empty and at night and whatnot. Um, then COVID struck in the midst of us looking at securing the lot and leasing it up. And when COVID struck, I will actually I'd love to take a moment to commend Tim Cummings and the mayor. The expediency that they did, the plan to rescue the downtown, which is what they did. Um, the restaurants that were, that are the lifeblood of the downtown, I know that they're not the only businesses, but they are the lifeblood. They were uh, impacted to the extent, you know, as we all were, every business was, but the expediency that they did to put them out there, I commend them tremendously. It, it, and it, it worked and it functioned and people survived and got through it for that summer. That summer during COVID, the traffic was much lighter. There were far fewer people out. So it, it, it appeared that it was working mag magnificently. I mean, I said, wow, this should be here forever. Then COVID, this next summer comes around and it's, it's not quite what it was. And people are out, they're traveling, they're using the roads, and uh, they're eating indoors. So the necessity for it went away, but the need for the streets became much greater. Um, the need for parking never went away. In fact, it still increased. In fact, I, during COVID, I never secured my lot because I felt bad watching all of the street parking go away. I said, I can't be that guy and secure this lot and start towing people from a private lot and collecting money when everyone is hurting. So I never secured the lot and it's just been public domain, as I said. I, 90% of the time I go just surf or wherever I'm going downtown, I frequent the downtown. I generally can't get a spot in my own parking lot. Um, that day is coming where we're now saying the summer's over. It's been quite some time. Hopefully the barriers go away and people will get back to having more parking, more access to parking. Um, we're securing that lot now. We're in the process of it as we speak. I also have a tenant in the upstairs, uh, not for the main bank branch, but upstairs. So we're needing to, um, at this time, secure the lot. So I'm making the board aware that that lot is going to come out of the public domain as it's been, so to speak, and it's going to be privatized lot. And we are, uh, we're in the process of doing that now. So that's 50 spaces that just are going away that people have been utilizing. Uh, so I want you to be aware of that as your plans uh, go forth. Um, my one other concern I have that's, you know, it's not parking per se, but the traffic flow to the downtown, I, I don't know how we fix this and what part of the plan, what, what this purpose is, but if it can be expanded to look at how the traffic flows West Pearl Street, um, you know, because from my courthouse, the Penichuk building to the downtown, the, the, the parkway, uh, there's a, a maze of uh, turns and I'd love to see the, the West Pearl Street lot uh, one way flip to the other direction so that people don't have to travel the circle. Final comments. So they don't have to travel through a, a maze. And I think that, you know, several times you see, if you're sitting outside, you'll see the same uh, cars multiple times. So they're adding more traffic to the downtown. That might, some, some traffic pattern might alleviate the, the, the issue that we have as well. So I don't know what that's been looked at, but, um, but thank you for your time. Have a great night. Thank you. Anyone else here would like to come up? Not seeing anyone in, in Zoom. Okay.
Well, uh, thank you all again for your time and input. As you come across people um, who have, uh, who say, God, I really would have liked to have made that meeting, it's unfortunate. Um, please remind them if you go to the city's website, there should be a link posted prominently that will allow you to get at both of those survey tools. Uh, we're gonna keep those survey tools open for at least the next two weeks. So as folks wanna make comments, whether it's to stick a pin in the map and make a comment uh, about a concern in a particular area, or if they're willing to take a little bit more time and go through the more detailed survey to give us some feedback and insight into what their patterns are and what their concerns are, um, we do take that completely into account. It is part of our analysis. Uh, it does help direct our attentions as far as it goes. And we would be very grateful for that input as we start to move forward. Um, and I hope to see all of you again in January. Um, hopefully wearing a uh, Red Sox 2020 World Championships yes. ball cap. All right, and just to reiterate, this, the survey will be sent out um, via email. Uh, we'll be sending it out, sending out a press release. Um, so it's gonna be, we're gonna make sure it gets out there. So I just wanted to let everyone know that. Oh. I, I do have one other question. Um, sure, you have to come up to the mic. Um, is it at all possible that you would accept some kind of uh, petition as customers come into the different businesses that um, would like the barriers removed or some kind of modification? Because um, we, we do have so many complaints and I've started to ask people. And again, not everybody's gonna come to these meetings and so forth, but is that something that would be a, acceptable to the board or to the committee that um, be helpful in any way to push things one way or the other, I guess is what I'm asking. I'm not really entirely sure how to answer that, but. Um, well, it's, the, it's so, Nashua's public speaking by, yeah. you know, I've actually started a notepad saying, if you are not in favor of the situation that's going on now, if you'd like to sign this, feel free. I just want to, I don't want to create friction with anybody and I don't know whether you need to have their full address or, you know, um, exactly how it would, should be done. And you don't have to answer me this moment. If you'd like to shoot me an email or give me a phone call and say, you know, um, we've got 500 signatures, let's say, and bring that to some, to the next meeting or whatever have you and say, these are people that are concerned and that want their voices heard, but are not gonna to come to a meeting. You know, they're, so if you, I'm fine if you can get back to me on that. I don't need to have an answer this evening, but I think it would be um, a way to see what, see what Nashville's public wants. We all love our restaurants. We all love dining outside. We love to be on the sidewalk as opposed to in the street. And I think, um, I think a lot of people have a lot of things to say. Uh, they, they don't um, oftentimes come out to this sort of thing or, you know, for, for lots of reasons, you know. Again, there's a huge senior population and in Nashua and in everywhere. We're all gonna be getting older and everybody's life is gonna be longer. So we have to think of it as, you know, let's make it acceptable for the people who have, who have made Nashville what it is today, not s toss them to the side and say, hey, you know, you don't count anymore, you're 80 years old, because they certainly do count, so. We can certainly look into what the process would be for that. I mean, uh, I don't think there's any um, reason you can't start something right. like that. Right, I guess I'd like to know the, the particulars that um, a board or a committee would want, you know, addresses, phone numbers, or just signatures, you know, so that if we're gonna implement this or do it, we would like to be able to do it right. And I have a feeling that um, Mr. Wingate and his crew
crew would be more than willing to do that, and several other people that may not, you know, frequent one business and maybe not the other. Okay, great. Thank All right? you. So if you could get back to me on that, I'd appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. again. I just wanted to reiterate what Kathy said because for seven and a half months we have heard a lot of feedback from a lot of people and these people are not just us as working there. It's our customers, the senior citizens, it's the truckers, you know, it's the FedEx guy, it's the, it's the UPS guy, it's the Amazon guy. I mean we have a guy that's been there for 30 years and he's looking for another route right now. Uh, the Lyft driver at the last meeting with O'Brien, he just said, hey, I don't take in the Nashua route anymore. He says, I can't go up and down Main Street. My point is, is that you know, we're here giving our own thoughts tonight, but there's hundreds of thousands of people, and I'm really representing them. I went up and down Main Street the last couple of days because I wanted to learn more about what's going on. I went to two banks downtown. Both managers wanted to be here tonight. They are very against the barricades. I went through a lot of different shops, you know, Casey Holt, you know, down at Daryl's Music Hall. He's a water street, so he sees all the people going through red lights and yellow lights and people block the traffic so you can't go. So I don't want to go on and on about the barriers, but the barriers, I think, have created a real bottleneck in chaos downtown. Like the gentleman said with the EMT and you know, ambulances and police cars. I mean, every second counts when you're sick and you've got to get to an emergency room. So I guess, like Kathy said, we'd like to have some sort of proof or some sort of evidence that what we're saying here tonight are the fruits of all the efforts we've made to go up and down Main Street. Um, you know, the restaurants have admitted, like to me, that really the only time they might be busy is Friday and Saturday. So we both said, let's work together. Let's find a utilitarian way. And by taking the barricades away and restoring, you know, business the way it was, you know, that's what we'd like to do. You know, there's other issues, you know, the whole, I mean, I don't know about the finances of the city, but, I mean, I've heard that the parking brings in six or seven hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue, and I'm just thinking, if all these parking spots are barricaded and you can't use the parking, there must be tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars that the city might be losing that they could use. So um, anything that we can do to prove our point as far as the barricades, I just, my frustration is, you know, I've been doing this for 37 years, and I've never seen as many people in the last year since the barricades went up that are so frustrated and walk in the store and go, what is going on with the city? What is going on is chaotic. And like I said, we get a lot of new customers that come in. The first time they've been there, they go, whoa, you know, I, you know the doctor said to come here and get you know, your medicine here, but I don't know if I'm going to come back. So I think you guys need to be sensitized to the fact that you know, we're there all day long doing Final our thing. Final comments. I'm sorry? Final comments. We have someone waiting to speak. Yeah, so, uh, so the final comment is that um, I just feel like there's got to be some kind of a better solution without the barriers and just work with that as a starting point. And if there's any way we can document it more, that would be great. Thank you. Oh, okay. Lauren, we'll be with you in just a moment. Hi, good evening. Uh, I wasn't going to speak this evening, but let me introduce myself. Alderman Mike O'Brien, Chairman of the Committee of Infrastructure. I, had a, I came in late. We had a, another meeting earlier. Uh, but however, uh, I heard some of the gist, and I took a walk myself downtown and went into many of the different businesses. And what has been portrayed tonight, I'm not saying anybody's telling any tales out of school, but may not be 100% accurate when it comes down to the barriers. So I went to, within the block in question, I went into each basic store and talked as much, you know, to people that would talk to us. And a lot of people said they weren't really affected. So we have the yin and the yang here, or people coming up with it. And I understand one group has their primary objective and somebody else has theirs. 
And we just went through COVID. That was a whole intention with the barriers and everything else like that, and we survived it. You know how we survived it? Looked at Main Street, folks. I don't see any plywood in the windows. We did all right. So now it becomes part of the culture. And, you know, somebody is not going to be happy with this. And I completely understand. I have no stick in the mud. As chairman of infrastructure, I will try to rule and try to come up with the best way that we possibly can. What I would like to see, maybe if you could, as part of the <clears throat> study and everything else, to get some feedback, really legitimate numbers of what people say, you know, and whether they like the, uh, the barriers or not. And that way, I think we'll have an uncontaminated point of view that I think we could weigh the balance. Again, my mind's completely open, but I'll go with whatever the people really want. But I think we need a better way than objective opinion. I think we need to have some form of survey that will come up that we can say, these are the numbers. And that way, we'll educate us as we make the right decision, whatever it may be. Thank you. Thank you. Lauren? Hi. Lauren, if so, you um, just, I um, am state a your name and your address for the record. Sure. Um, my name is Lauren Moylan. I live at 47 King Street in Nashua. Um, I'm a customer of Wingate's Pharmacy, and I work downtown as well. I, I understand the need for the barriers, and I understand the problem with them. I see both sides. Um, my coming on here, I really wanted to throw the idea out there to see if even if we could, you know, think about it or if there was a possibility. I know that there is the parking lot behind Wingate's. And I have seen some of the older ladies and, and gentlemen who do struggle coming up that hill in that parking lot when they do have to park there. And I didn't know if it was possible to take at the very top of the hill so that they wouldn't be climbing the hill. There's two spots and one motorcycle spot. And I didn't know if we could throw the idea out there that maybe they could be turned into handicap parking for the people who need it. And that could be a more immediate solution for all the other scenarios. Um, because I do, I, I see the need for them and I see the, the problem with them, I see both sides. But I was thinking that maybe that would be in a, a solution, a fix for now for the people who do need it. And that's, that's all I want to say. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Okay, any final comments? Not seeing any on Zoom, not seeing any in the room. Good night. All set? We're, 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 All right, well, thank you, everyone, for, for coming tonight. And uh, keep an eye out for that survey. It will be coming out within the next 24 hours. Thank you.